Blog Talk Radio. You're quite hostile. I got a right to be hostile, man. My people been persecuted. Check one, two. This is Enemy Minds Radio on the Minds Matter Block Talk Radio Network where matters of the mind matter. Greetings, family. Peace. Hotep. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Abibia Fourier. Alafia. On the move, as my good sister Pam Africa would say. Black power. What's popping? What is do? What's good? Good evening. And welcome to another edition of Enemy Minds Radio with your host, Professor Griff and... Miss Zaza Ali. Peace. Peace, peace. to the doc. Uh, peace to... Can you turn it down a little bit? I'm, I'm You know, I'm listening oh, as a oh, listener. A little Check loud. Wow, you ain't checking for shade. That's the one. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, peace, peace to the gods peace. and goddesses. Peace to the uh, RBGs. Peace to the Pan-African family. Peace to the Rastafari. Peace to the Native Americans, peace to the Hebrew Israelites, peace to all of our family covering every 196,940,000 square miles of the planet Earth. And thank you to you and peace to my big brother for holding it down and um, doing what needed to be done in my absence. Oh, give thanks, Miss Ali. This is the show where minds produce minds that produce minds that produce great minds because minds matter. We are souls in search of souls that are like minds, like mine. This show and every show is dedicated to all those that are dedicated. It's taught to us by our good brother, Dr. Reverend Phil Valentine. That's right. And Sister Amy Garvey taught us to stand on our own two feet and fight like hell for our place in this world. That's right. And we're definitely standing on the verge of getting it on to bring about a revolution, a revolution of the mind, that is, because minds matter. Revolution is complete, constructive, conscious, cosmic Change. We're here to bring about that change here on Enemy Minds Radio. You can be whatever you want to be in this world's life on your way to becoming gods and goddesses, having a human experience called you as taught to us by our good brother, Professor Smalls, Professor James Smalls. That's right. And we were also taught by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, just in different words, uh, that there is no such thing. <laughs> I'm left my quote up. Um, uh, just... Yeah. Elijah Muhammad taught us that to find God, we must look from within. There's no heaven yes, and hell. Yes, we must look within. Heaven and hell is not a physical place. It is a state of mind. Right. I repeat, it is not a physical place. It is a state of mind. I just had that talk with my son today. Uh, therefore, we build minds and hurl truth at falsehood, destroying and rebuilding. Once again, this is Enemy Minds Radio on the Minds Matter Block Talk Radio Network, where matters of the mind matter. Our aim and our mission... It's to raise the vibrational pitch pitch (laughs) of our thinking into the mind of the creator, as taught to us by Taneda Muhammad. That was beautifully said. And also to raise the conscious level of the human family and replace racism, white supremacy with justice so that we can live in peace on this planet that we affectionately call Earth. 
The call-in number is 347-633-9644. We definitely want to know what's on your mind. We want to have this particular dialogue with you tonight. Once again, the call-in number is 347-633-9644. So in the spirit of our ancestors, to whom shoulders we stand on, we like to say, Ashe. And Ashe simply means, so be it. And with that said, since we're talking about history tonight, I want to call on the spirit of a brother to whom which uh, we owe a debt uh, to this particular brother to pull his books off the shelves and stand on the shoulders and make applicable this brother's work in the lives of our lives and our children's lives and generations to come. Um, I want to call on the spirit of none other than this historian who gave so much to our people uh, in the way of history. And this is Baba John Henry Clark. John Henry Clark said, history is a clock that people use to tell the political and cultural time of day. It is a compass that they use to find themselves on the map of human geography. It tells them where they are, but more importantly, as he say, more importantly, <laughs> what they must be. Our Baba John Henry Clark. Indeed, Ashe. And I'm going to come from a different angle tonight just because I am here in Oakland. Um, It got me to thinking about um, the history of this city. Uh, One brother in particular, Mayor Elihu Harris, who was a uh, black mayor who was uh, politically ostracized in more ways than one, as most black mayors across the country are. Uh, at one time, the majority of the uh, local government here in Oakland was a, uh, predominantly black, and Oakland was predominantly a black city. Well, now, of course, uh, uh, gentrification uh, has taken hold, and uh, we've seen blacks lose control of the city as well as uh, lose control of uh, different areas and in infrastructure like the port. But in honor of the history uh, and the legacy that Elihu Harris left here when he was in a position to do good for our people, as well as the Black Panther Party, uh, Huey Newton in particular, of course, uh, who said there's no reason for the establishment to fear me, but it has every right to fear the people collectively. I am one with the people. Uh, And then also the Nation of Islam and the, uh, the power structure that was established here uh, back when Yusuf Bey uh, was in his right righteous mind, and um, all of the brothers and sisters who represented the Nation of Islam, the FOI, and the MGT uh, that are still here to this day, uh, just representing my city tonight and, um, you know, coming in the honor and in the name and in the spirit of all those great brothers and sisters who worked hard to keep this city out of uh, the, the stronghold of mm-hmm. the stronghold of, uh, you know, <laughs> These devils, um, uh, I want to come in the honor and in the spirit of all of them, and we say Ashe. Ashe. So in the spirit of all those prophets, messengers, and guides who came to us in the person of great women, to all those unknown soldiers that have fought, bled, and died for the freedom, liberation, struggle of our people here, here in the wilderness of North America and throughout the black African diaspora, we say Ashe, 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 Ashe. If you'd like to contact us, you can hit me up, Professor Griff. Just tweet me at Real Prof Griff. My email address is Professor Griff, P-E, at gmail.com. If you'd like to text me or call me, not doing the show, you can text me during the show, but please don't call. My phone number is 678-557-2919. That's 678-557-2919. And to the young lady that I had the conversation with, um, I know that you're listening in reference to Dr. York. Um, correcting uh, me and Zaza's point of reference in reference to the history of Dr. York, whether he confessed or didn't confess. Thanks for the information, and we will definitely correct that point of history. We'll correct ourselves from this point moving forward in in reference to the history of our good brother that's locked down by this beast in the belly of this beast, our good brother, Dr. York. I'm sorry. Can I be in light to what the correction was? The correction was the fact that when we, when you and I on Brother Rich show talked about him confessing, the condition that they had put him under, the drugs that they had him on, the diet that they was feeding him, the pressure that was laid upon his shoulders in reference to the other people that they arrested, this information we weren't privy to. And and based on the information that the sister uh, gave me, um, the people that 
so-called drop dime or said whatever, recanted their statements, and there's a wealth of information that's out there in reference to correcting that particular thing surrounding our good brother, Dr. York. And I can honestly say from the time that I've spent with you doing research, and his name has came up several times, I don't think we did it any justice by uh, going into it. We should have went into it a little bit further because those statements that we we made on Brother Richard's interview wasn't wrong. We just didn't have enough information. So she said there's a lot more. Uh, I, 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 I agree. Excuse me for cutting you off, but I, the, the statement that we made was based off of his concession. Right, now, exactly. all of the things that happen in the background, uh, those are things that we should be uh, more conscientious of or aware of, as well as all of our people. But we did make our statements based off of his confession. Right, now, but not only that, if, I told her, the people, I don't mean to cut you off, but the people that I was in touch with during that particular time, they, uh, and, and these are family members, all right, that these people are related to him, that was feeding me the information, so I would have had it correct, but they pulled away from it simply because of the broader range of the FBI coming after them. So mm -hmm. the truth did not get out to the broader masses of the people in reference to Dr. York in his case. And you and I, okay. one of them, or two of them, pardon me. Okay. Yeah, we watched, uh, I watched one of them, I believe. Um, but yeah, I just, yeah, I, 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 if we need to be corrected, then we can be corrected, but I just want to uh, you know, clarify, you know, we made that statement based off of a statement. I mean, it, it didn't come out of thin air. Right, um, right. And, I, you know, I want to be careful because there's a there's a, 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 a culture, and this is not personal to Dr. York, of course, uh, but there is a culture now where, uh, you know, situations and things are happening to our girls and our children that are not being properly handled. Right. So I don't want to give the idea that uh, we are becoming part of that culture. If we need to be enlightened, enlightened by all means, please do enlighten us. Um, right. And I, I, we can leave it at that. Um, right. I'm sorry for cutting you off, brother. No, no, no. The sister was definitely uh, humbled herself. She was very, uh, she was very open. She was very positive, and she just, uh, you know, she called in a, with a beautiful spirit, and she directed me mm -hmm. to some information that I'm definitely going to look up. Right. And, and please do share it with me. Yeah, of course. Because um, we definitely don't want to, uh, you know, we want to be on the right. right track as far as what we put out as far as our people. Um, is it my turn? <laughs> um, it's your turn. I gave them my phone number. So normally when that happens, you say, um, yeah, I say, on. yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know, right? Um, so if you want to hit me up, uh, my Facebook page is still not up, and I'm not starting another one until I know for sure that they are not going to turn my page back on. I'm still waiting. Uh, it's too much work to do all of that stuff over again. So, but for now, on, for, for in the meantime, you can hit me on Facebook at Enemy Minds. That's N M E M I N D Z Radio. I do check the messages. There are a lot of unchecked messages. I checked the page today. And I'll go back to them and try to respond to everyone uh, as I have time. I haven't been online in a while. Um, you can reach me via email, our email address for anything concerning upcoming events, lectures, DVDs, books, etc. Uh, and also, if you would like to make a donation to Enemy Minds Radio to assist us with all of the different projects we have going on, including building our website, which is going to be off the hook. Uh, it is currently in the works. Uh, the email address for that is mindmatterbtrs at gmail.com. That's M-I-N-D-Z-M-A-T-T-E-R-B-T-R-S. Uh, the Warriors Conference DVD is available for purchase. You can shoot an email to that email address if you would like to purchase it. Also, I've gotten a lot of requests about the Francis Crest Walsing Lecture uh, with featuring myself and uh, Marimba Ani. We are going to have tickets. We're waiting for the tickets to be printed, and we have an um, Eventbrite page that we will be promoting for all of you to go to and purchase the tickets. Uh, just hold tight for a few more days. As soon as we have the tickets in hand, then they will go on sale, and you can buy as many as you would like as soon as you like. So just hold tight for that. Um, and then our Twitter page is at Enemy Minds Radio. All right, and our YouTube channel is Enemy Minds TV. Um, we're looking for some good people that want to work these particular things because the work is overwhelming. All right, we want to build this Enemy Minds YouTube channel to the point where 
uh, you know, you go to the website, you, you go through the website to get to YouTube, and uh, all the information will be there, all right? Um, for the people that sent me the text message that want to participate in the, uh, the Cypher uh, online study group, you have to be patient. Um, I just decided I, we do have 24 to 30 people as I requested. Thank you all for us signing up. I do have enough people, but I have to wait till after Black History Month because I am going to be on the move. Matter of fact, I'm going to be on the move with the brother that we're having on tonight. I'm going to introduce him in a minute. But I want to shout out Kanita Lindsay uh, on handling that Twitter thing. Really appreciate it. With, appreciate that with the assistance of myself and then Zaza Ali. We got to get back on it, Zaza. Shakir, the general, Jamal um, on the uh, graphics, as always, doing a beautiful, wonderful job. Uh, took a joy ride the other night with the. Uh, Foxy Mama, Miss Erica, and uh, Jamal, we checked out some things in the ATL, in the deck, and trying to make some things happen. Uh, Minister Paul Scott checking in, Society from Society Productions, Black Didot from the BX, King Simon, I'm going to see King Simon, it's hopefully that snow melt, that fake snow melt in New York. I'll see <laughs> King Simon this, <laughs> this Saturday and Sunday. I'll be in Brooklyn speaking at Brooklyn, pardon me, at um. Uh, Nicholas Brooklyn, uh, in Brooklyn, I, and then the private location, I'll be announcing that a little bit little bit later on. Darren Muhammad, State of the City, check him out. Siddiqui Bakari, Smooth Maddie Matt, all the way from Florida. Yo, Smooth Maddie Matt be on it, Zaza. Him and Jay Wu, yeah. for real. Yeah. But guess who else is I on do it? Who? Uh, what's the name? Black Sun and uh, uh, B. Sun. Trey. B. Sun, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm B. sorry. B. Sun, B. Sun and John Trey. And John Trey sent me a really beautiful, beautiful message. Uh, matter of fact, shout out to John Trey. Shout out to all the brothers and sisters who took time either on the Enemy Minds radio page or sending message through you. Or uh, I know I got a lot, a lot of messages in the chat room last, uh, last show that I couldn't check. Uh, peace to the family in the chat room. I'm not doing it. Griff is doing it tonight. But um, all of the people who actually took time to write me, uh, however you sent your messages, even if it was just in positive thoughts or, uh, you know, prayers, I appreciate each and every one of you. And when I, when I really just sit down, it's probably going to take me a few hours to go through everything. I'm going to try to respond to everyone. All of the love and encouragement uh, and positivity has been greatly appreciated and needed. Uh, during this very, very difficult time for me. So I just appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, give thanks. And we definitely appreciate you. And I want to shout out my good brother, Brother Rich, from up top, um, from UGR, Underground Railroad Net dot com. And you can find him. His YouTube channel is Black Magic 363 on YouTube. Brother Rich, me and Zaz, I would like to thank you personally to let you know our numbers have skyrocketed. Zaza is going to verify that a little bit later on in the week, but last time I checked, which was a few <laughs> minutes ago, it's up to 500 and some odd thousand listens. 500 and what? I want to oh. know the, I want I'm to know the that, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go search, look right now and give you the exact number. But just the mere fact Thanks that so it's up to 500,000. Yeah. 500,000 listens? That's critical. If you put, yeah. what, eight, 16, 18 months into that? That's the numbers. Seriously. Yeah. Well, that's the truth. You know, people uh, are gravitating yeah. towards truth, and I think people are, our people in particular, are tired of, of getting watered down, you know, right. step and fetch it, you know, this this whole clown show that's happening right now, right. Uh, particularly in, in the media and people who are supposed to be representing us. Um, the days, you know, this is, our people are tired of that, especially young people. They need something new and something fresh and Right. Not to say that we are the only ones who are doing it, because, of course, there's a lot of brothers and sisters who are out here doing it. But it's just the truth um, that pulled us in. It's the same truth that's pulling our family in. So we definitely right. appreciate all the listeners. The numbers are bananas right now. Like, right. you know, when we look at the YouTube statistics on the videos that we do and then the, the numbers on the shows are like, oh, my God. Like, you know, we went from 300 and, what, 5,000 to over 500,000 in, what, a month? Right, in a very short period of time. But those brothers and sisters that we consciously know that take our stuff and repost it and put it back on YouTube, thank you very much. Truth Seeker and a few other people. 
And the numbers that Brother Rich is doing is sending people back to the blog talk show, and they're going into the archives, and I think that's what's doing it. And we do not, please don't get us wrong, this is no egotistical thing. We do not take all of the credit. Uh, we are the people. You understand what I'm saying? We speak for the people. It was a beautiful quote that Zaza just gave us from U.E.P. Newton. I am, as Steve Biko says, I am because we are, therefore, I am. All right? We're the vessel that the information is coming through, and we share it with you, and you give it back. All right? We're about the business of raising the conscious level of our people, and we're doing that. With that said. That's right. And not and not not seeking followers. Uh, you know, all of us have the potential in us to do great things, each and every one of us. So you are never going to hear either of us come and say, me, 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 I, 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 I. Um, it's our time right now, uh, which is why, uh, you know, people are gravitating towards us. But it's only because it's our time as a people, as a collective. So, uh, you know, our goal is to raise the conscious level of all of our listeners, uh, to get you to tap into the God self, to understand that there is nothing on this planet or in this universe that is outside of your grasp or outside of your limits. But you have to start with yourself, not following Griff, not following Zaza, not trying to be Zaza. When sisters say, I want to be just like you, no, I, I want you to be the best you that you can possibly be. And if I can be a vessel to help you get there, there, then, you know, by all means, I, I am uh, humbled and grateful. But um, we have too much, we have too many people pointing the finger at themselves right now. And I'm standing back and scratching my head trying to figure it out because when you look at the condition of our people, I really don't see anything to brag about <laughs> as right. far as, you know, that whole, uh, you know, that egotistical, arrogant, uh, you know, um, climate that 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 is is prevalent right now in the conscious community so you know our work is only going to be reflected and measured and 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 uh rated based on the condition of our people so um it's all about y'all the listeners you know the impact that we have you fasting with us on wednesdays we know you hanging in there you know if you you taking heed to the books and the you know the information that we put in the videos, and that's a that's a that is a uh, reflection of you and where you at right now and your right. goal and what's about to go down on this planet. All right, and with that said, we want to open up this uh, show. We have a few minutes before we bring our guest on. Once again, John Henry Clark is the ancestor. We're calling down his spirits. So we can stand on his work and his shoulders, and all of us that revere this historian. Uh, Baba John Henry Clark. John Henry Clark said powerful people cannot afford to educate the people that they oppress. Because once you are truly educated, you will not ask for power. You will take it. With right. that said, <clears throat> this brother that I'm about to introduce in a few minutes after we uh, break for a couple of commercials. Um, he's a curator of the Black History 101 Mobile Museum. I've traveled with this brother now going on 10 years. Wow. This is 10 years. 10 years. The Black History 101 Mobile Museum. Our good brother Khaled L. Um, Akeem is going to join us tonight. And Zaza, I can remember uh, one of the first times I actually flew to Detroit to do one of the, uh, to set up the museum and put it on. We were actually in the parking lot of a school in, in the cold because it was an actual trail then. We weren't going into buildings yet <laughs> in the warm heat <laughs> with samosas and tea and crackers and crumpets. And we were out in the cold in the parking lot doing what we had to do in Detroit uh-huh. in the winter. So imagine uh-huh. you've been to Detroit in the winter, so I know you know. Yes. Yes. And yes. once again, brothers and, and sisters. And uh, let, me, let me say, uh, Brother Khaled, uh, well, let me, I'll wait till he comes on the line. Oh, okay, cool. We're gonna get him. Uh, we're gonna get him on in a minute. But uh, the, he, uh, he's a curator of the Black History 101 Mobile Museum. He's been collecting for 22 years now, collecting artifacts so that we can be able to set those monuments up, those statues up, those those uh, iconic figures up, and have the information so that when we uh, look back on history, look back at this time, we'll be able to document. Uh, document this period of time with the uh, with the uh, the artifacts that we need to tell these particular stories. These artifacts are buried in the basements in the attics of old white slave masters' children. 
that this brother have to go and retrieve these things. They're buried in the dirt, in the front and the backyard. They're buried in old stores and uh, places that, you know, that's collecting dust right now. And uh, this brother charted a path to go find these things and put together a 5,000-piece mobile museum that he sets up. All right? That should be commended in and of itself, the work that the brother is is um, doing. And it's a critical, daunting, awesome task that the brother is taking on. But as we always say on this show, Zaza, and you can bear witness to this, that the Creator has prepared us to do exactly what we need to do. So it is uh, with that brother doing the work that he is doing. So we take our hats off to Brother uh, Khaled El Akin. Um, I'll tell you what I what I call him when, when he gets on the line, man. And um, I'll tell, we take our hats off to the brother for the work that he's doing. Now, he was a Detroit school teacher. He was the one teaching man, man, and twan in them. I'm talking about you know that clip that you showed Zaza about the unruly children at the school. Yeah, yeah. Kyler had a bunch of them in the class. <laughs> mm. No, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I taught I taught the class a couple of times, and it is no. Joke. It is no joke. What we have to kind of deal with to educate our black uh, boys and girls that have been stung by the sting of racism, white supremacy. So I'm gonna play a few commercials and we'll be right black with our brothers. That all right if I do that, Zaza? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Uh, hold on. Let me stop this. Uh... So you all right out there? How's the weather? Uh, the weather is good. The weather would be beautiful if they hadn't been spraying chemtrails, uh, all day long. It would probably be about 78, 79 today, but, uh, uh, they've been spraying all day. So it's, you know, low seventies, but it's been beautiful uh, ever since I've been here. Crisp, fresh air. Um, I'm, I'm sitting in the hood right now, looking around, watching my surroundings. Um, oh, I hear you. My, <laughs> my city, you know how it feels when you go home. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's Oakland. It's the town. It is what it is. Right. I'm looking at a brother right now. Take the selfie. He's playing <laughs> on the mm. corner, boy. <laughs> Our people. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so tonight, um, since I I can't get Utzen's name off my mind, I don't know what. Maybe that was two syllables. Just I can't shake it. So I'm gonna start off with my good brother. Are you an author, music artist, or entrepreneur? If you have an amazing book, brand, or vision you want to see come to life, contact Uzben, a Brooklyn-born artist specializing in original Afrocentric hip-hop and cultural artwork for books, logos, CD covers, apparel, and more to fit your unique taste. So email artist at Uzben.com, A-R-T-I-S-T at U-T-H-Z-E-N.com. Visit online at com or call Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at 646-362-3370. That's 646-362-3370. And make the visual as one-of-a-kind as you are. Does your business need a boost? Did you hire Pookie and them to do your logo? At Free Yourself Designs, we can help you and your business stand out with our graphic design services. Backed by our 100% custom design guarantee. Call us today, 919-964-FYD1. That's 919-964-3931. Or email us at freeyourselfdesigns at outlook.com. Free yourself and free your mind with Free Yourself Designs. This is your man, Cut the Check. Checking in one time. Producer, songwriter, artist, whatever you need, I got it. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, check out for my beats on SoundCloud, follow me on Instagram, and cut the check, K-U-T-T-T-H-E-C-H-E-C-K. Get at my Gmail, songs for cut, at gmail.com, that's S-O-N-G-Z. Number four, K U T C at gmail dot com. Got that heat for y'all. Yeah. Does your say it loud? I'm black and I'm proud. Wear your pride on your chest with Foxy's unique limited edition apparel for men, women, and kids. 
Check them out at MyFoxy.com. That's M-Y-F-O-C-S-I.com. At Foxy, they even have a variety of art, pillows, and more at MyFoxy.com. Use coupon code MMBTRS14 and get 10% off your order. Get Foxy. Get your loved one out of jail. Express Bell Bonding Company is located at 236 Forsyth Street, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia, 30303. We provide professional and courteous service with getting your loved ones out of jail fast. We are open 24 hours a day and provide service in the surrounding Georgia counties and the United States. Call us at 404-522-3201. Again, that's 404-522-3201. Once again, that's 404 510% clothing is an apparel that caters to the athletic and fitness community. Our goal is to provide top quality athletic apparel and accessories in this particular market. We sell hats, shoes, and shirts for any athletic or outdoor activity. You can contact us at 110%clothing.com or call 800-216-3623. That's 800-216-3623. Test of emergency alert system capabilities. This test message has been initiated by National War is being waged against us on all levels. Be dressed. Be ready. With Warrior Wear t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, and hoodies. Come check us out at our website, warriorwearrbg.com. Again, that's warriorwearrbg.com. This is Enemy Mind, 
Radio with Mr. Greg and Miss Zaza Ali. Coming all the way from Oakland. Zaza, are you there? I'm here. I had to play that again for the second week in a row because uh, you were, <laughs> you, you were in Oakland. Sound business. Yes, sir. Sound business. They high side because they representing the O. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, cool. And as we said, we're going to bring up our guests. And um, we have our guests on the line. And ladies and gentlemen, I need everybody to stand up on your feet and give a welcome to our good brother all the way from the D. Um, yeah, I don't know where to start, but I'm not going to call him Brother Stanley, so just... Go ahead. <laughs> 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 Boy, you my man, Richard. Oh, my man, Richard. Good, good to hear from you. <laughs> Khalid El Akim, the curator of the Black History 101 Mobile Museum. Peace, man. How you feel? I feel well, man. You you know me too well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you go back a few years, huh? Yeah, man, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Oh, that's Glad good. to be here. Okay. So just to start this off, for the people that don't know who you are and what you do, can you give us a brief synopsis of who you are, what you do, and just kind of how you got to this point? of having a mobile museum, which is a concept that you yes, probably need sir. to explain to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take it all the way back with this one, man. Take a few minutes there. So right. <clears throat> I'm an educator from Detroit. Um, I taught social studies in Detroit for about 15 years in the Detroit public schools over on the east side of Detroit, Detroit Lions Academy, which was an alternative uh, middle school. Uh, but I started collecting memorabilia back in 1991 after taking an uh, introduction to sociology class up at Ferris State University uh, with a professor by the name of David Pilgrim. And some of your, your uh, audience members might know him for being the founder of the Jim Crow Museum of Racist mm. Memorabilia. Right, right. And it was in his class that um, I was first introduced to artifacts from the Jim Crow era. And what he did uh, was a, a very powerful way of, of teaching he used to bring artifacts in the class before he, we even opened up textbooks. He would use these objects to um, spark discussions in the class about race. And I just found it a very um, powerful way of, of teaching, man. It, it took us out of our comfort zone and had us, you know, have us some deep conversations. So shortly after his class, I started going to, into antique shops, into used bookstores, and flea markets, and garage sales, looking for initially, initially, Jim Crow era artifacts, you know, the Mammy um, artifacts, the Uncle Remus, Sambo type things, uh, Coon postcards, that mm. type of memorabilia. And then eventually I reached beyond that because you just can't stick there. And you know, I think one of the powerful things about uh, collecting that, mem that type of memorabilia is to put that next to memorabilia of those leaders and those people who persevered through all of those types of negative, um, that negative propaganda. Mm -hmm. so if you look at an a, a ancient Mama piece, for example, and think about someone like a Booker T. Washington or, uh, or a Carter G. Woodson or George Washington Carver having original artifacts and documents signed by, by those individuals, it gives us an idea and a glimpse of all the different types of ways that um, our leaders dealt with and addressed white supremacy in America. Right. So, and, and so, so uh, Carter G. Woodson, for example, the document signed by him, and having that in the mix of all that Jim Crow memorabilia lets you know that he responded to, you know, for, uh, for example, his professors who told him that black people never contributed anything to history, to world history. So that was his driving motivation to get a Ph.D. at Harvard University and write uh, the miseducation of the Negro, and then to start Negro History Week back in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. So having that type of balance um, is real strong. So I started, you know, started collecting, and then a few years after that, uh, in 94, 95, I found myself teaching in Detroit and using that same methodology to teach my students. Um, and then in 1995, prior to that, you know, it was just pretty much a personal collection that I shared with friends, family, and then, you know, some of my students got it in the classroom. But it was um, uh, at the Million Man March in 95 that um, Mr. Farrakhan, you know, gave us a, 
a challenge. You know, his, our, our walking orders was go back to our community, make a difference, make some type of contribution. And when I thought about what I had access to and what my passion and my interest was, I thought about this museum. So I went back to Detroit. And there's a brother in Detroit, a uh, revolutionary brother in Detroit, uh, by the name of Malik Sabad. And Brother Malik had weekly meetings um, and still has his weekly meetings to, uh, up until today uh, where he would bring in, you know, black intellectuals, black revolutionary intellectuals, everybody from um, Bob Adele Jones up into, you know, uh, Brother Khalid Muhammad. So right. I, was, I was setting up exhibits at these different functions. And it grew from there. People started talking. I started getting invi- invited to different schools, different colleges, um, different community events. And then eventually I was getting invited out of town, you know, out of state. And, you know, it grew, man. And, and 20 years later, you know, I'm here. I've traveled to 23 states with this, uh, been to Canada with it, been to over 50 college campuses, uh, a gang of K-12 schools, libraries, you know, religious institutions, you name it. Um, I've been, you know, been able to take this to, to just non-traditional spaces where you wouldn't necessarily find a museum. But because um, a lot of uh, our people in Detroit are not going to museums and supporting museums like that, I decided to, you know, try to reorientate, especially the youth, to a museum experience. So we, we bring the museum experience to these non-traditional spaces. And pretty much that, that's it in a nutshell, man. Eh. Okay, that that is that is a lot. You come from yeah, it, you've come a long way, definitely. Yeah, and, that, so, and that's just a short version. That's just a short version of it. Right. So, brother, um, we see now. Uh, Griff and I were having a conversation uh, recently. He was telling me about a brother, a professor that he was having a conversation with that was saying that um, the, they're trying to rewrite the Olmecs out of history and give credit to that civilization to uh, the Aztecs. Um, and, then of course, we saw what happened with Nubia. Uh, they tried to right. erase Nubia, which was the, the, the parent civilization of Kemet. Uh, the Moors right. in Spain have been whitewashed. Um, yes. There's a lot of different, even especially with music, we can give reference to a lot of different uh, times in history where our culture and our history has been basically erased out of yes. out of the books, um, can you speak to the current uh, situation that hip hop is in? Uh, it's funny. I, I was listening to an, an interview recently with Jill Scott and Eve, and they yes. were talking about Iggy Azalea. And to me, they were real soft on the question about um, you know this whole idea of hip hop uh, being whitewashed. So can you speak to, and nothing against them, but, you know, that's just my personal opinion. Um, can right. you speak to the condition of hip-hop right now and our music uh, being whitewashed? Yes, but let me let me go back a little bit, because what you said in terms of those ancient cultures being whitewashed and being written out of history, I think mm-hmm. it's really, really important for us to build a generation of scholars that address that on these college campuses. And, you know, we have we have the, the you know, our non traditional type of scholars who are important and, and we should celebrate them. But it's on these university campuses that this history is being rewritten and, and it's important for us to be at these tables writing this history as scholars. Um mm-hmm. I mean you got people like brilliant scholars like um Wesley Muhammad who's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant scholar who, you know, is writing uh, scholarship that goes into these uh, academic journals that people read, and he's able to defend his scholarship via that, and that's what makes um, a difference in a, in a larger picture where you have, where you, where you have somebody like an Ivan Van Sertima who, in his scholarship at Rutgers, was able to set a tone and, and debate and challenge, you know, this white scholarship. So it's important mm-hmm. that we that we um, that we have people who reference Dr. Van Sertima but now, but we don't have those scholars that have replaced them, or your John right. Henry Clark. Right. I mean, you have you have some, but we. I mean, at this point in time, if people are still referencing miseducation of a black um, of the Negro, 
that was written right. in 1936 is problematic. I mean, we should have been way beyond that in terms of scholarship. So it's extremely right. important that we push for scholarship of young black men and women in these institutions of, of higher education. You know, I mean, it, it's extremely important that we do that. So I want to say that on one hand. Um, Agreed. And in terms of um, the, the whitewashing of, of hip-hop, it, it's at that point worldwide, you know, everybody has access to hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. You know, I was able to um, uh, travel uh, extensively through Europe and through Australia when I was managing proof of, uh, of D12, which I did for a few years. And be able to go to somewhere like Estonia, which I never thought I would ever go in my life, and to see these people knowing and living, you know, hip hop in their own um, authentic, you know, their own, you know, genuine, genuine type way. And I think he talked about uh, the issue with Iggy that you know she black, uh, she made I uh, forgot when she when she referred how she referred to the black accent that Iggy has or she, she projects on her music, but that's not authentic. I don't have mm-hmm. a problem with white folks taking music and being off their, their authentic selves with the, you know, with the music. I, I, I can appreciate that. But when you take the music and you flip it and it becomes a minstrel show, that's what I have a problem with. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 you're, if your experience is, is in the suburbs and you love mm-hmm. hip-hop, then speak, then speak to that. If you if you grew up in rural America and you love hip hop, speak to your experience. And I think the most authentic thing that that comes from hip hop and the realness comes from you speaking your authentic voice. And you know whether it's not it's it's it's, it's, it's um, emceeing, DJing, breaking. I mean all that. As long as you're real and you, you're keeping it real, then I can appreciate that. Anything beyond that is a problem. You know it's just that. Vanilla Ice Syndrome, you know, and, <laughs> right. uh, and, and and people are gonna call it out, but she right. shouldn't, and he shouldn't be um, offended by it because you know he ain't being real. So, and, right. and like uh, he, like uh, Jill said, Jill said that he sounds like a mix between Eve and the Brat, which he does. Yeah, and that's not her, yeah. that's not her experience. You know what I'm right. saying? So that that's pretty much my my opinion on. It. Right. Do you but, think that? Do you think that? Because uh, I think. I think you know something that is not really. I, I was I was hoping that Sway was going to ask the question about the disrespect that he she's clearly shown uh, the lack of history, the lack of respect for history, and just the the disrespect of our people, whether she's doing it intentionally or not. Do you right. think that hip hop artists of today, uh, i.e., uh, Jill Scott or Eve or anybody for that matter? Do they have a responsibility to address those things, or should they kind of leave them where they lay? You know what? It, I think it comes down to, to the individual artist. I mean, we we are the conscious community, quote unquote, conscious community. Of course, we want to see all artists step up and address those issues. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I would love I would love to see that, but the reality is is that you know, people. I mean, your average guy's not going to do that. You know, right? Um, I, I just posted a video of um, Killer Mike. I think um, Killer Mike at um, with Minister Farrakhan today. And I think Griff, you were sitting next to Killer Mike in that. I was, in that, I was um, right video. next. To him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The puppy that's how, about, that's how I saw you in there. But yeah. um, you know, Killer Mike just breaking down the whole global impact and potential of hip hop. And you know, you have a room full of influential hip hop artists and. I mean, if people didn't hear the passion in Killer Mike um, articulation of that whole breakdown, I mean, if they missed that and then they missed the message that Minister Farrakhan had to say after that, I mean, you know, you got the blueprint right there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, I mean, you can't beat people, say, beat people over the head with it. But, I mean, I think, you know, people need to listen to that every day. If you're in the hip-hop industry, you need to listen to that every day until you know until our, our condition changes. I mean, because all all that you can you know imagine um, was was what's wrong and with with uh, the challenges that we have in hip hop, mm-hmm. it, it was it was laid out in that. Right. So let me ask so, you something. Um, go ahead. 
Do you, um give give the people an idea because I'm I don't think they're clear when you say three one oh one mobile museum. Give give the people an idea real quick on when you get the phone call from the time you leave to to either drive or fly. Uh, what happens? Everything in between, and by, and you you pack up and go home. What happens? All right. So first and foremost, <clears throat> Black History One Hundred and One refers to just an introduction to our history. So One Hundred and One means just an introduction. It's, it's the basic. You know, we're we're just scratching the surface of our history because there's no way that you know any Black museum can be definitive of Black history. I mean, it's just not gonna happen. So this is just an introduction to our history. Now, the collection itself is over 5,000 artifacts of an original memorabilia, and I think that's important, too, and something that makes this collection very unique is that the artifacts that I bring out are things I've collected over the past 20 years that are original, that you're not going to find, you know, anywhere else unless you go to, you know, like a Schomburg or maybe the Gustavo or, or the Charles Wright Museum. That signed, you know, by a you know, great historical figure. You know, everybody from Rosa Parks to Angela Davis to this cat named Professor Griff, you know, Chuck D, um, <laughs> Colonel Scott King, and Malcolm X, and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, Dr. Ivan Vance, third month. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. So when I get phone calls, um, and you know, like I said, I've traveled to, you know extensively throughout the United States, again, in about 23 states. Um, I pack, pack up, you know, several bags, put them in the car if it's somewhere we can drive to, and um, we set up for a day. In some cases, people have had us three, three days up, up until a week. And um, we set up. The public comes through. We give lectures. We walk people through and give people historical context on the artifacts. Um, I've been blessed to have Professor Griff travel with me for the past nine years doing this work. So Griff's uh, lectures, Sister Zaza has come out with us, so you lecture. Um, and then over the years we've had um, everybody from Jessica Care Moore to the last poet, the brother Sam Greenlee, rest in peace. Uh, we've had Proofs and D12, uh, Paradise Race from x Clan, brother Jay from x Clan, Oh, my brother – Omari King Wise, Brother Dumini, the former shout out to my brothers in Detroit. Um, Chairman Fred Hampton has been out on the road with us. So it has been a very unique experience uh, everywhere we've gone in in the United States with this. Um, well, on an average, how many that's, tables that's a, you set up? On an average, how many it, tables? It, it's 10 tables. We set up 10 tables and we bring anywhere from 150 to 250 artifacts. Hmm. And, and, you and, know, some, brother, and some, and, and some, some of the things, you know, some of the the, um, the exhibits are thematic. So we have we have one that um, based on um, Minister Malcolm X. You know, we call that necessary. We have one that um, based on uh, the, the legacy of black politicians, which, which is really unique, which is called Drum Majors for Justice, and we use that in the K through 12 schools. We have mm-hmm. one called Peacemakers that um, celebrates the uh, contribution of all the black uh, people who received Nobel Peace Prize, Prize, and that's something for the youth also. And we also have an exhibit called It's 101, and it stands for uh, Inventions, Technology, and Science, which, again, is a very educational and youth-driven uh, type, of, type of exhibit. We have one that deals with the Jim Crow uh, era that's called uh, Don't Call Me Nigger. And we have uh, two more. One is called Respect, and that's dedicated to black women. And the final one is called And the Legacy Continues, and that's my um, signature hip-hop exhibit. Um, and that has about 150 to 200 artifacts in it. And, and, um, and again, you know, when you have 5,000 artifacts, you know, you can make up all types of uh, exhibits. But those are our, our signature exhibits, so. And, you know, Brother, I, I want to thank you for having me there in Detroit uh, and giving me the stage to do uh, a uh, presentation on black women in antiquity. Um, that history is definitely probably my, my number one love. Um, I'm definitely a student of history. So 
uh, your your the displays that you put on are are extremely important for me. Um, which item would you say, uh, if you can choose one, gets the most attention or shock value or controversy? Controversy, and why do you think that is? Uh, that, that's easy. It's, it's it's well, it's a few of them. Um, we have a uh, a set of original uh, slave shackles mm-hmm. uh, that that um, who get emotional about, and I mean I've, I've had you know people cry in that section of, of the exhibit. Um, but there's a, an original uh, Ku Klux Klan mask. There's the original photograph from the Marion, Indiana lynching from uh, 1930 um, that, you know, when, when you look at lynching photographs, you usually see that one of the two brothers hanging that inspired Billie Holiday's uh, Strange Fruit, the mm-hmm. song. So um, those, those are probably some of the most, um, you know, controversial um, artifacts that I have that, that people really get emotional about. And uh, actually um, has has pre- prevented me a couple of times from going to college campus. Um, wow. So, yeah. Have you had any you bumps? Have in... a, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Have you had any bumps in the road as, as far as um, people kind of like not knowing what, you, what you're what you going to come and set up? But once you get there and set it up, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, you you get that, and and people are blown away, you know, and and, and that's why, you know, if you, if you look online, I, I share some some pictures, but um, I don't share a lot of that that information because I want people to be surprised. I want people to to inquire, you know, once they show up, that they don't know nece- necessarily what to expect. I mean, you know, when you think about a black museum, I mean, certain things, you know, I, I ask uh, the youth, you know, what do you expect to see in the black uh, museum, and of course they say Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, and you know maybe Malcolm X, and then they say you know slavery, but you know our history obviously is a lot more deeper and broad than that. Uh, so when people actually see the artifacts in the museum in this chronological timeline of objects, I mean people are blown away, man. So um, you know I don't necessarily you know promote all the things that I'm going to bring. But I want people to to be surprised and and um you know and really get into it and be engaged with it once they see it. You have one piece that um, I can't remember the exact uh, name for it, but it was a small copper looking uh, looked like a, a horseshoe or half a small mm-hmm. just very small, uh, and you gave the history of it. It was a uh, well, it was used as currency in the purchasing yes. of slaves. Yes. And you passed it around uh, in Detroit and let everybody kind of, uh, you know, put their hands on it and get a feel for it. When you first learned of that history, when you first got a hold of that piece and put it in your hands, uh, what what was that feeling like? What went through your mind? <clears throat> that piece is called a Manila. And, mm-hmm. and like you said, that, that was the currency that was used to buy our ancestors. And when I first you know, it's, it's something about dealing with, you know, these original objects that, that I have I have a connection with. I, and, you know, and some people have it, some people don't, but I, I really have a, a, a connection with some of these artifacts. And, you know, it just, for me, it just takes me back to that time, kind of like in in um, the movie Sankofa. You know, you, you find yourself in this space, and then all of a sudden you're taken back into time, and you're just like, you feel that energy, you know, and you feel, you feel the ancestors and you, you know, and, you know, you feel those stories that go along with it. And, you know, and, and it's an emotional piece. And um, I, it, it was about probably 2007, 2006 that um, I actually started carrying that piece around in my pocket every day. And I was teaching class with um, in this middle school class and I told my students, you know, I'm, I'm taking this manila and I'm going to have it in my pocket every day from now until I die, mm. just as a reminder, just as a mm. reminder of what my purpose is. And mm. as we're speaking right now, I have it. It's in my pocket. Wow. You know, wow. And, and and once and once I I uh, made that commitment, it's interesting because my whole focus of the museum and and my purpose in in things just grew exponentially from from that point. I mean, it, it just grew fast. 
So uh, that was 2006, 2007, and, and they, you know, I started doing national tours at that time. And I've had I've had that thing in my pocket every day since then. I might have missed out, you know, a couple of days along that road, but it's, a, it's been in my pocket every day since that. And that, you know, that's perfect. Wow. You know, every time I reach into my pocket, it's a reminder. So, wow. Um, yeah. yeah so. Right. What was your best? What was your best experience? The school that that you went to, not that everything ran wow. smooth, but the, wow. the the moment that moment that that day that you seen the look on the students' faces and felt the energy, and you you knew you finally said, okay, you know something, this is why I do this. Wow, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of schools like that. I mean, you know, the the blessing is this, Griffin Zazan, is that because of the type of work this is, you're always winning. You know what I'm saying? You you can't go somewhere and not have someone be touched by this work. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, public enemy is always going to be winning. You're not going to go somewhere and not rock a show. I mean, people, you know, you, you do, you know, we we play It Takes a Nation of Millions, people mm-hmm. are going to go wild on it. So you're, you're always in the mode of, you know, you're filling this void that's needed. And, you know, it, it, it's a blessing. I mean, you know, a lot of guys are stuck, you know, in this work. So you're you're always winning, but I, I was out in Portland, Oregon recently at the at um at a couple of middle schools. But there's one middle school in particular called Da Vinci Middle School. It's an art a art based middle school, and this was a, their second year bringing me out. Mm-hmm. So to see the growth of those same students from last year, meeting them again this year, and having them anticipate my coming. And to have them have already have some type of context, and for them to ask the questions that they ask, and to have them engage, and for them to see new material, man, it, I think it was that, you know, coming back again to that group of students, and then knowing that they want to invite me back again, and then hmm. then there was one student in particular who wrote me an email um, last week, and then the day after he wrote me um, that that um, email, his mother wrote me. Mm. And she, she's a part of a large organization in in, um, in Oregon. And she just wrote me and told me how impressed she was just by him. She didn't even see the exhibit, but just by what her son told her about the museum. Wow. And, uh, and, and just for a parent to take her time out to write me an email, that, that's priceless. Well, that's why we do what we do. You know, right. That, you know, right. That we, we touch lives in that way. Because, you know, one email, that's worth, you know, uh, you know the input of, you know, all those other students. I mean, that's representative of, of those other folks. So, you know, right. it, it just makes me feel good. I mean, you just never know how many people you're affecting and you have an impact on. And, um, you know, I, I try not to take any of this for granted. And, you know, it is, it's just a blessing, truly. Right. Um, Let me ask you this, brother, because uh, uh, speaking of, of young people, um, you know, I, Griff mentioned earlier, um, I had did a, a, a lecture recently at the Scientific Intervention in Our Affairs, and I, I showed a video of some young people uh, at a school called Last Chance in Chicago. These are obviously troubled uh, youth. They are angry. Um, you know, and, of course, we know the condition of the young people, our children in Chicago, as well as all across the country. If you could get a group of young, hard-headed, stiff-necked, thugged-out black brothers in a room, which of your, if you have one in particular, one of your, uh, your, uh, you know, uh, the ones that you do that have a complete package or a certain right. time period in history, what, which of those would you offer them, and why do you think it would have a, the, a, a good impact? And, and you know, I'm, I'm coming from Griffin. To tell you about Griffin to one of those types of spaces where where I taught um, mm-hmm. in Detroit, and you know, right. it's serious. I, that, that's that's the environment that I come from. And you and you offer those students things that they immediately attach onto. Unfortunately, you know, the language of our youth is very harsh for your average person. So I, I remember my first day of school in that in that school. Um, I walked in and one of the students said, "Who's this nigga think he is?" <laughs> and I mean, just, just, just straight up, 
like, I mean, he sized me up like, who do you think, think he is? And I pulled him out, the, out in the hallway and called the, the principal to have the principal uh, address him. And the principal said, oh, is that? Wow. I was like, shit. I was like, all right, well, I know what type of environment I'm in. So let's, let's start. Let's start there. You know what I'm saying? Let's start. Let's start with the word nigga. Let's look at the origins of the word. So wow. I would bring teaching lesson all these artifacts that have the word nigga on it, and mm. give them a historical context of where the root of this word comes from. So let's take a look at old maps. Wait, um, call it, call it, call it. Hold, yeah. hold that thought. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if you moved around, but it's gotten kind of choppy on your end. All right, well, we're gonna, let's, uh, let's, let's, take, let's take a break for a commercial real quick, and we come back. Now, now I'll keep you where you are. You on the word nigga and using that as a teaching yeah. uh, teaching moment, all right? Okay. Because okay. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose our place. We'll be right black. Check one, two, one, two. It's Enemy Minds Radio with Professor Grip and this Zaza Ali. All right, Saturday, February 7th, 2015, from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, at the uh, Of Spirit Filled Ministries, Professor Grip and Zaza Ali will be speaking along with Sister Shireen. She will be dealing with uh, getting them to know, I guess themselves, getting to them to know uh, through and beyond the blueprint of your child's success. Sister Shireen will be speaking along with uh, Zaza Ali. Zaza is going to be speaking on black matters. And Professor Griff and myself will be speaking on the control, manipulation, and the engineering of human consciousness. That's Macon Road in Columbus, Georgia. Just a few more minutes. Uh, two minutes down the road, all right? That's a few minutes down the road from the ATL. All right, that's 5150 Macon Road, Columbus, Georgia. Uh, Ten dollars for tickets, uh, fifteen a day up or at the door. All right. Um, you can call four zero four four three eight four three eight three one five six four zero four four three eight three one five six. All right, it's Professor Griff, Sister Shireen, and um, Professor Griff. All right. Um, that's for our worldwide. Bringing that to us, my man Jahi Muhammad. Shout out to Jahi Muhammad, Professor Griff, Sister Shireen, and Miss Zaza Ali. All right, make sure you'll make it down to Columbus, Georgia. Ain't too much going on in Columbus, so we gotta show uh, Columbus some love. All right, uh, up next, me and Zaza will be in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. So if you're in the Jacksonville, Florida area, Sunday, March 8th, 2015. Zaza will be speaking on her book, Black Matters, all right, along with our good brother Scott Whitaker, the author of the book, Medicine. All right, he'll be talking about Ebola and other weapons of mass population control. That's Al Salam, 1625 North Pearl Street, Jacksonville, Florida, Sunday, March 8, 2015. Um, there should be a number on there, but it's not. Just call me, 678-557-2919. And uh, we'll make sure you get tickets and information. I think it's $25 at the door, all right? Scott Whitaker and Ms. Zaza Ali. Of course, Professor Griff, myself, would, will be hosting, all right? So you'll have to make sure you'll definitely uh, make it out. Right, now hold on for a second. I'm trying to find this lecture I'm doing with Professor James Small. Me and Professor James Smalls will be in the ATL Saturday, February 14th from 2 to 8 p.m. Professor Smalls will be speaking on the God Essence. This is part two. Yeah, me and Zaza was at one he did. One Memorial Civil War Memorial Museum in D.C. Beautiful lecture. I got to hear that in its entirety. We're going to be at Vickers uh, on Cascade Road at 838 Cascade uh, Avenue, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. All right. Vendors, there's vending opportunity. Available for more information, contact Ms. Patricia Patton at 323-929-7724. It's 323-929-7724. Or once again, hit me up at 
Now, you can go to www.the.connection.net if you want the fan ticket. All right? Of course, there's a cheaper price for children and cheaper price for students if you have ID, but general admission is $20. Professor Griff and Professor Smalls, we're going to be dealing with the God frequency, the God essence, the fingerprint of God, and the God essence. Saturday, February 14th from 2 to 8 p.m. So definitely make sure you'll check myself in. All right. All right, cool. Um, I got a couple more announcements because I'm being real. Gaza, are you there? I'm here. What you laughing at? You're laughing at me by announcement. That's right. You full on announcements tonight. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get it in. <laughs> There's no other way for me to get it in because I want to take calls. Collar, you want to take some callers? Yeah, yeah, sure. I need to. Got Zaza over there. Well, wait, I, I, yeah, I, I do want to hear him finish breaking down uh, that, that the whole idea of using nigga as a te- teaching lesson because. I think it's important where he's going with this because a lot of us don't really understand how to connect with our youth. So, uh, you know, take heed to what the brother is saying because we have to use these uh, building blocks in order to reach these young brothers and sisters in the street. Right, and we have to kind of talk, speak their language and, and, and talk to them where, they, where they're at. So this is Professor Grip and Zaza Ali, and our guest tonight is Khalid El Akim, the curator of the Black History 101 Mobile Museum. And before the break, we was talking about the term nigger, simply because a comment that the student made to uh, college. (laughs) 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 I can just imagine that. Tay Tay looking up at you and you're like, look straight. (laughs) 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 Uh, All right, so you I love love my brother. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, so. I taught geography, I taught, you know, social, all the social studies, but geography in particular. And what I would do was uh, I would bring out world maps and, uh, well, U- United States maps from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and we would look at all the landscapes and the bodies of water that were named after nigger, with the word nigger used in mm. So you, you have, you know, I have a postcard that's called Nigger Head Rock. That's in a place called Queen mm. and Gap. Oh, I've seen that. I uh, see. You know, wow. uh, wait, you, Kyla, say people, that again. Say say that again, so everybody that that didn't catch yeah. that can hear that. It's called. It's a postcard I have. And it's a it's a place in Pennington Gap, Virginia, that's called Nigger Head Rock. And mm. basically, what it is is it's a it's a rock formation that's on a cliff that has the profile that looks like a black man. They call it, you know, strong black man rock. They call it nigger head rock. Mm-hmm. And and um, we were in Tennessee once, and this um, tall white guy walked through the exhibit and said, "Oh, I know, I know that place. Like that's that's where I was born." <laughs> and, wow. And, and and he's he's like, he's like, well, I gotta tell you something. He, he's like, well, they call it stone face rock now. But he's like, well, you know what? The locals they still call it nigger head rock. So mm-hmm. I mean, it it still exists. If you go to Kingston Gap. Virginia right now, and ask somebody about this nigger head rock. Uh, you know, you, they they will point it out to you. And it was so prevalent that they even named a bank in Pennington Cap. They they named it nigger head rock bank. So I have I have a a, a, a check. I have a check with this image on it. So, but it, it's wow. Weird. But you know, you you had you had you had nigger creek, nigger lake. Nigga Mountains, nigga. Um, if you were uh, traveling through Arizona in the 1930s, you could pick up a postcard that talked about the cactus. Uh, they called it uh, Nigger Head Cactus out there. They had a Nigger Head Swamp in in uh, in Alaska. So you know, using that as a point of reference to speak of you know what are the origins. I mean, talk about geography here. You know what I'm saying? This is not just you know. Um, just anything. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's geography. So it shows you how nuanced white supremacy is, you know, and it was in, in in that regard, but how it still is today. I mean, it's nuanced, you know, and you mm-hmm. find you find right. it in the, the most interesting types of places in, in society. 
So, uh, but that, that's one way that, that that would address it. And you know, you get those students engaged with that. I mean, instantly mm-hmm. engaged because they use the word nigga every day. Every other word is out their mouths is nigga. And then right. you go, all right, all right, well, let's let's deal with it from this point. And then, right. if nothing else, you change the paradigm of their thinking. When and if they catch themselves using it, they have a totally different mindset. Although you might not stop it completely, at least you've changed the paradigm. You've changed right. the point of reference. Right, mm. exactly. All right, Great we're going to open up the phone lines. And uh, as always, brothers and sisters, um, this is Enemy Minds Radio. Um, please respect our guests. We don't debate on this show. That's down the dial. Y'all can tune in some other time in somebody else's show, not this one. We don't disrespect um, the guests. No long dissertations. Make a comment. Ask our guests a question and make it about this point. Some people be calling up talking about, man, I want to talk about, you know, mosquito <laughs> the molecular structure of an elbow of a mosquito or something. I'm like, bro, we're not talking about that tonight. So anyway, <clears throat> Uh, we're going to open up the phone lines. Our guest tonight is Khaled El Akeem, Black History 101 Mobile Museum. We're going to start with the 405 area code. 405 area code. What's good? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes. Hello, Professor Griff. Hello, Zaza. And I didn't catch your name, brother. I don't want to screw Khaled. up. Khaled. Khaled? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, how's everybody doing? Uh, I think what you're doing is brilliant, and I'm so glad you have started this movement. It's inspiring me, and I hope it inspires others, and I'm sure it will. My brother is a history teacher um, here in Oklahoma City uh, at Douglas. However, he is uh, going through a lawsuit because he is, well, <laughs> he has somewhat of a temper. However, you know, you shouldn't put your hands on anyone, but I can kind of see where he's frustrated, he, how he's frustrated, why he's getting so frustrated due to a lot of the children and their behavior. Um, so they, they fired him, uh, and he was – a lot of the parents are against him, and he's he's really trying to help the community, but they don't see it. However, um, we're just going to keep, keep doing what we do and try to find better right. ways and, and stuff like that. However, the word nigga, nigger, whatever, as far as – now I've heard I've heard from someone that I, I really respect. He he said that nigga, uh, it's a mentality. And please correct me because I have been I have been letting people know because what he said made sense, and I don't want to be saying something that you know is not going to work out in the end or make sense in the end. He said it's a mentality, and. Um, you know, I don't use the word much. I use it if I'm joking around, but I don't use it much. I, and I don't really, uh, when someone says it, I'm not really offended. However, if it's someone of pale skin or blah, 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 um, if they're saying it directly to me, I'm not going to respond. I'm going to give them that look. It is offensive. Um, right. But what, is, it, is it a mentality? I mean, couldn't a pale skin person be a nigga if they were running in the street with their Clothes off, say, yelling obscenities and blah blah blah. Mm. N- niggas were made and manufactured in the United States of America, so right. it comes from that mentality. It comes from a white supremacist mentality, and you know, unfortunately, a lot of our people have internalized that racist mentality. So what you see is after you know four hundred years of being called that when when the oppressed internalizes that negativity then you have you know you have that behavior that comes out uh, but I mean we, we know what the roots of it is I mean it comes from you know it comes from it being made and manufactured under this oppressive system and I mean that that's it for the most part hmm. Carla do you mind if I if I respond as well yeah oh of course um you know, we if you have the long, uh, extensive uh, route to understanding our history and understanding and knowing that our people were lynched, men had their penises cut off, eyeballs plucked out of their faces, ears cut off, uh, while being called niggers and being burned at the stake, that our grandmothers and our children had fires burned in their yards with crosses, 
while being called niggas, uh, if you understand and take all of that history into account and then still feel comfortable with using that word and talking amongst your own people whom we should be referring to as brother and sister or king and queen or god and goddess, if you still feel comfortable using that terminology, then I say by all means. But I will say that we as a people need to go back and really, really take a deep, hard, extensive look at what has happened to us and why we would be comfortable referring to ourselves as niggas and bitches and hoes and dogs and all of these words with these negative connotations because whether we understand it or not, when you use a word that has a negative connotation, it comes with a negative energy. So you may be doing it in a joking way, uh, speaking amongst your friends and your family members, but it still has a negative connotation to it. So, you know, I don't preach about the word that much. It's more so uh, the behavior that we need to be focused on. But at the same time, the word lends to a negative behavior. So we just need to be mindful of that and be mindful of the history, especially we got the brother on talking about history. Um, You know, we have to respect those ancestors that paid that price for us. That's right. Right. Not, right. And not only that, Zaza, the term has a neg- not only a negative connotation to it, but historical negative uh, reference to it as far as the reference point. So, Sister, calling from the 405 area code, I hope you understand that when white people say, yes, they can be called nigger, with what Zaza just explained, that nullifies that whole notion. They haven't had the experience. None of them have been burned at the stake by black people while we called them cracker. None of them have been burned at the stake and their penises and ears cut off, eyeballs plucked out of their head while we called them cracker or nigger. So right. we notice this, we, we can't we can't just take the word and throw it around like it's some hip fly up to date kind of thing we do. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I when do, I do understand. When hear the word nigger, it brings something up in her that's very tearful and painful. Yeah. Can't take, throw that word around like it's nothing. You know, I, I agree, and I appreciate the education. And actually, I you, I um, I was speaking to a woman the other day, and she brought that up. You know, people saying nigga this and nigga that. She said, well, just don't respond. Don't claim the word. And I said to her, you know, it's really a mentality. And that's why I said I want to. I want to be educated so I can say the right things. And what you guys just said makes a lot of sense. And I just got into studying my history, and uh, I will, I'm going to go all the way to the end. And I'm sure, just like you said, the more and more I learn, then the better I will, uh, the more I'll understand uh, several things. And uh, that word, that word, um, nigga itself, and, and I'll be able to spread the word as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Right, give thanks. That's Thank a you. beautiful. That's a beautiful response, Queen. Beautiful Thank response. You. you couldn't have said it any better. Right. Oh well, thanks a lot. Love you guys. All right, take Peace, care. Love Queen. you too. Peace. Peace. All right, caller from the seven seven zero area. Go. This is Professor Griffiths Ali, and our guest tonight, Khalid El Akim. All right, what's good? What's your name? Where you calling from? Seven seven zero. Seven zero. Yes, you're not. There. See how you automatically revert back to your Atlanta. But he's from the seven seven oh man from the ACL. Yo, inner, yo, inner Atlanta thug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, we hear you good. Where are you calling from, man? Yeah, I'm calling for this iPhone. I actually know what's going on, brother. I was missing. Me and my um, my spouse was watching the um the video on YouTube when we thought we were talking about the iPad, so I'm a day behind. So I caught you guys here. Yeah, I caught you guys on here live. So, you know, I, I appreciate y'all info, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, just make a long story short. I got to come down. I'm here on here live, man. So I really ain't got no question, brother. You can give me a question, you know what I'm saying, or, or okay. what I think about what's question. going on. What sounds, yeah. like, what sounds like this? Yeah, brother, we got to get back to you, bro, because you ain't got to question. <laughs> you, no you just shoot the shit. You just on the phone. Oh, man. Man. You good, man. You the eight, I'm, man. I'm real, man. Call it from the 8 0 for Professor Griff. Daza Ali on Enemy Minds Radio, where we keep it. We doing big things now, nah, man. Blah, blah, blah. We got our guest, Khalid El Aki. 803, what's good? What's up, man? Um, hey, Pete, brother, and sisters. 
Peace. Peace. All right. Um, man, I'm glad. I'm glad you uh, really clarified that for the last sister who was on, who was just on, yeah. because I, I really believe life and death is in the tongue. And um, just yeah. like Griff said, man, it's uh, that's that, it. Bring, it should bring up pain within you. Should, you know. So uh, I was just telling my boys the other day, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's in a interracial relationship uh, with a European a female, and um, he 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 says he says the word a lot around her, and like she just just the fact that she had just the fact that she was bold enough to be like you know I don't like that he says it either reason I don't, I don't like that word either, and I was like see bro I was like you shouldn't even be saying it like that in the first place, and now like you saying it with a white girl you know what I'm saying mm. like. Who who's getting nullified by that, and you know, and then still she like still able to be like, hey, I don't like that either. And I was just like, well, bro, I learned from um from Sister uh, Zaza that you know um once you make a conscious decision not to say that word, you know what I'm saying, that's better for you. You know what I'm saying. A lot of people think it's like it's like one big bold step to and then to be success. No, it's you know what I'm saying. We might not be a little. We might we, we might have already offended. By the, you know what I'm saying? We might not live to see that day, but, you know, you can't just, like, it's it's all small steps. So I was just like, yeah, man, you got to stop saying that word, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, catch yourself. Like, every time you constantly catch yourself, you don't know how much stronger that make you, bro. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? You, right. You know, and, um, but, yeah, man, like, that word, you know, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. but, yeah, I slip up and still, and, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Said sometimes, too, I, I can't even lie, but you, but I do know, like, now when I use it, I was, it's like when I'm, when I'm a little tempered or a little upset, or you know what I'm saying, with somebody, or just like happen to be around the spirit of other people already saying it, you know. And then I had a sister told me, like, like she was like, you got to cut off a lot of your friends because you pick up that spirit, something I already knew mm -hmm. from a, a, a southern a Christian background. My mother's a, a pastor, but I am just the fact that that you that, that European culture takes from our African culture. Um, a lot of the stuff that I learned in church, I was able to apply. And I'm like, when I went to y'all lecture for the first time and I came back home, you know, my mom, she questioned me. She was like, so what all they was talking about? You know what I'm saying? What, what all they was talking about? I was like, basically everything you saying, like, that we shouldn't have been listening to rap music. Like, I, sh I should never, like, got in a fraternity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, di I didn't get in a fraternity, but she always told me as a youngest that, you know, reason you get to college, then go to fraternities. And, you know what I'm saying? I was like, it's like, Cussing and stuff, mama, and stealing and stuff like. That. I was like, all that right. stuff they talk about. Only difference is they got on they got on their kente cloth and then they rep right. they they know who they who they they, they not you know what I'm saying they bold out. Right. And I was so like, brother, but I like but you, you know what I'm saying. People who work out that and you know so. Bro, let me but, ask um, you. Yeah, do you have a stop. question? You have a question for the guest? You have a question for the guest? Oh, okay. Um. Oh, uh, how, how long have you been a uh, and been doing this, bro. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been I've been collecting for about twenty four years now, and um, I've been traveling the country nationwide for about ten years now. Okay, mm. that's what's okay. that. That's critical. We really appreciate your call, good brother. Thanks for your story, man. Tell your moms we said peace. All right. All right, peace, God. And God. All right, peace, peace, peace. bro. Peace. God. All right, call us from the 510 area code. Sounds like Oakland to me. 510. Yep. This is Zaza Ali. Khalid El Akeem, the curator. 510. Hello. Hey. Uh, good evening, sisters, Jaja and Brother Griff and Khalid. Uh, I came in late listening to the, uh, um, the story tonight. But uh, some of the collectors that we had in our day was the Quaker Oats collection, mm -hmm. and also uh, the the little uh, jockey collection that yeah. the white put out in Leilan and Marin City, uh, Sausalito, which is a uh, place in California, uh, and it was very derogatory. And our parents, our parents taught us not to use the N word; that it was derogatory and demeaning. Right. And I, I, I came up in the and um, I just wanted to say I thought it was an interesting stuff to be bring up because a lot of people don't know about the N word, right. but it's very derogatory. Yeah. And that's all I want to say. And I want to 
a shout out to uh, Sister Jaja and her loss that we were constantly keeping her in mind in the Bay Area and her family. Thank you so much, Queen. I appreciate that. Thank you, sister. We really appreciate your call. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Caller from the we're gonna have to bounce all the way to uh, hold on for a second. I just had it. Oh, we're gonna go to Texas. Caller from the seven one three area code. This is Enemy Minds Radio. Do you have a question or a comment for our guest, Khalid El King? What's good? Greetings of peace. Solidarity, health, and power to you, Queen, and all you kings on the air and all Peace. the queen and kings in the listening audience. Oh, Just a brief comment on the N-word. It's one of the most racist, white supremacist, degrading, offensive, vile, evil, demonic words. And, you know, I feel blessed that when I was growing up, we were absolutely forbidden to use that word. That mm. word was created and reinforced by the incarnate of evil. And mm. evil doesn't have a lid on it. Evil isn't kept in a box. Evil lives on. And so when you use that word, even in jest, mm-hmm. that word will create, continue to create that white supremacist, racist ideology. Right. And also, I think that when people are using items, when they're reading when they're eating, they have to be careful from where they're getting these things because people that are creating those can be using that word and inflecting that spirit into certain items, certain food, and certain neighborhoods. And uh, I I really applaud all of you, and thank you so much for what you're doing. Oh, good, thanks. Thank you very much for your call. Thank you, you. Peace. Peace. All right, caller. Can I, uh, Griff? Before we before we go to another caller, can I ask the brother something real quick? Yes, ma'am. Um, with the situation in Detroit now, brother Khaled, uh, mm. uh, you know I've been trying to follow up with as far as condition there. Is it is it ripe? Is Detroit ripe for our people to go there and invest in property and investing in? in the people there or is it is it bureaucracy and red tape that's preventing us from coming there and doing anything because i hear both i hear people say you know you can't come to detroit right now and buy property because they've got a stronghold uh keeping certain people out and you know canadians and different foreigners are coming in and buying property so is it right yeah. for us to come in and invest i i say i tell, I tell you what's holding us back it's our unity that is holding us back. It is our unity. It's our lack of getting together and having some type of agenda that pulls our resources together to take advantage of this this opportunity to get property in Detroit. And I would suggest that we don't even look at downtown. Downtown is gone. Downtown is gone. I would say we should look at the most derelict area of Detroit, Go in and buy it up and reinvigorate that area because mm-hmm. other people are doing it. The Chinese are doing it. They're they're buying up Detroit right now. Right now, the Chinese mm-hmm. and the Europeans are are buying up Detroit. But there's certain areas that we still have a, a lock a lock on, and if we went and, and purchased those properties and invested. I mean, we we could do it. I mean, Detroit is still eighty percent plus black. I mean, mm. we still you know, and all we're lacking right now is unity. And, mm. and yeah. all we have to do is go back and and read message to a black man for all of America. You know, do it is do for self all day long. Right, right, right. You uh, I do, and, I do think that that's something that we should uh, pursue, um, being that you absolutely. are there uh, and, and you know, Brother Omari and a few other people yeah. that are there. I do think once we get our website up and, you know, the uh, the book whole book on books are out and everything, that we should kind of stop and pull the people who are serious together and sit down at the table and really start looking at making some moves out there because it doesn't cost a lot of money to do it. We just have to be unified. Right, yes. Yeah. And, and, right. and there, there are some there are some brothers there that are trying to 
build and pull re- resources there. There's a brother there by the name of Farrakhan Muhammad, who's on the mm-hmm. ground with the Nation of Islam, who's doing a lot of things in real estate uh, right now. So, I mean, okay. when you have individuals like that, we need to put our support behind him. There's a brother by yes. the name of Robert, Robert X, uh, Robert Muhammad, who's also doing a lot in, in real estate, too. Um, so, I mean, we have to, we have to pull, you know, pull our resources and, and give them backing to make sure that they're successful. I mean, because their success is our success, especially when you have a strong uh, economic program. So, you know, we need to, you know, put our, our support behind those individuals. Right, exactly. All right, uh, we got a caller that's going. I'm going to bring on caller. This brother is a very influential brother in Reno, Nevada. He brought me and Zaza in. We had a beautiful two or three days, and Zaza set it on fire, man. Um, the sisters that she spoke to felt uh, her passion, uh, resonated with her with what she was saying, and uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful time that we spent there. Um, brother Claude, are you on? I'm right here, brother. How are you? How you feel, good brother? This is Khaled L. R. King. Oh. Khaled, this is brother Claude, brother that brought us to Reno. Hey. Yes, sir. How you hey. doing, my brother? Yeah, good. I'm good to well. talk to you, man. It feels so good just to hear what you're saying, man. You know, I had an experience back when they found the Amistad. I was able to go to Texas and check that out, you know, and it touched me mm. so deeply. And I saw with the even the reaction of the Caucasians, you know, how they. It touched everybody, you know, and so right. I really would like to see if we could get together and uh, maybe invite you out here to the University of Nevada in the near future to bring your exhibit here, you know. I, yeah. I, it would really be great. We got um, Dr. Umar coming in three weeks. He's going to be okay. speaking to the body here. And these folks out here, we, we're waking them up, man, and we need brothers like you, you know, to, to show the real thing and what's happening, you know. Well, I, I would love to come out. Just, you know, get my information from Griff or, or listen. I'll, I'll get my information at the end of the, the broadcast. But, yeah, I would love to come out there. Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, we're, we're really active out here. We, you know, waking the folks up. And thanks to Griff and, and, and Zaza, my brother and sister right there, man, the kids are on fire out here. We've got a big, <laughs> big month coming up, man. It's going to be something else, man. If you guys really helped out, man, I really appreciate y'all so much. Oh, Indeed. it was a beautiful experience, Colin, the and uh, they 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 opened the door for us to do what we need to do. And they said, just just do it, man. And I think we spoke three yeah. times. Yeah. Not, we spoke well, think, three times, a, and Colin, I had a group of young sisters. They split the they split the the boys and the girls up, and I had a group of young sisters, and I played the video of Venus Hottentot. And oh, yeah. that story of her life and them young them young sisters was in the audience bawling in tears, yes. crying. So we can never underestimate the power of history and giving yes. our young uh you know, that influence and that perspective. Mm-hmm. But 'cause they they're not I mean, just think about it. Your average school is not getting anything near, you know, Sarah Bartman in class. They're not getting anything right. near that. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. As a matter of fact, let's get to touch it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's what our young people need. They need that type of orientation to our history. So they, I mean, so they can get a sense of themselves. You know, because this this curriculum right now, I'm telling you, I've, I've seen it and have have taught it and have rejected it and had to come up with my own things to supplement, you know, that death that, that, that they're trying to promote to our youth. We we have to do a lot better, and we have to make sure that we get people in the communities involved in these school systems. I mean, I, I can't even stress that enough because a lot of the stuff that they're able to do in these school systems are being done because of our lack of participation in the process. Right. Right. That's so we, we, we got we we got to get involved. Right. Definitely. You know they have this uh, they have this thing called Common Core. You know, I yes. think you spoke on that before, Zaza, too, about this whole test program that they're doing, and we're really fighting that out here. And, uh, yeah. and there's so much going on. You know, they, they're trying to bring voting. Uh, you have to ID to, you know, vote. You know, they're trying to push that on us, you know, and then we're still dealing with the situation with the police. You know, they killed a guy out here after y'all left, my brother, you know, right in the back of my house, you know, brother. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're still investigating that. So, you know, there's a lot going on that we really need to really, in my opinion, my humble opinion, we really need to just stop with the emotionalism and just yeah. look at these things logically and attack them, as you say, Griff, 
in a military manner, you know. And also, I'm interested in that Detroit thing, too, because I got a couple of connections might be able to help out, man. We all just need to group together, you know. I'm not a rich man yeah. myself. But you know, hey, we can do this, man. Well, we can you do something. It, it doesn't. It doesn't even. We don't even have to be rich. All yeah. we need are our skills. If you have yeah. people who can, who are carpenters, plumbers, electricians, and masons, brick masons, we can we can do this ourselves. I mean, yeah. think about it. These houses are going for as low as five hundred dollars in Detroit. And I've been there, man. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. You know, it's a beautiful place to live. It's just that, you know, the the powers that be are actually trying to put the squeeze on everybody and put us in yeah. that big trick bag. Yeah. And I'm not with it, man. I don't care what they say, what they do. I'm right. I'm I'm on the front line. I, I don't give a fuck. Well, you know, you they're, 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 they're liars. That, that's for sure. They're liars. Uh, and, yeah. and like uh, Kwame Ture used to say, white supremacy lies all of the time. That's Not right. Some all of the time, the but yeah. all of the time. There's, there's some liars. That's right. So we, we, can't, right. we cannot trust it at all. Definitely. But we, we Definitely. do have to come together and, and, and go for self. No right. question mm-hmm. about it. All right, mm-hmm. Brother Claude, we really appreciate you, good brother. Tell the people in Reno that we said peace, and uh, hopefully you can get Colin out there with we'll exchange information either at the end when Colin gives his information or off the air. All right? Yeah, I'll text you, I'll text you in a few. And uh, Natasha says hi, Zaza. Peace, Queen. Oh, peace, Queen. All right, we'll talk to you, good brother. Have uh, a great peace. Day. All right, peace. peace. Brother Claude calling in from Reno. As a matter of fact, uh, that's what uh, Hank and Keith Shockley's grandmother used to call Flavor Flav because she, she couldn't say Rico. She said Reno. But anyway. Caller from the 917 area code. Caller from the 917 area code. This is Enemy Minds Radio. What's good? Hello? Peace. What's good with you, bro? Oh, man. What's going on? I didn't think I was going to get through. Zaza, Griff, uh, Khaled, thank you so much. You know, my name is... Uh, my name is Dave. I'm calling from the um, the Boogie Down. Um, first and foremost, I want to say I am um, I am Puerto Rican. I do 100% identify Boricua, but I identify and acknowledge my you know my African roots and ancestry. Oh, wow. And um, Khaled, I just want to say you know I too am an educator. I teach in Jamaica Queens uh, wow. Middle School, so I already know what it is. And yes, um, sir. Um, I just wanted to ask you: um, Are you going to be coming to New York with your um, museum anytime soon. Shoot, as soon as you invite me, bro. I, I, I do live <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, um, I got you. But but there's, there's nothing. There's nothing on on the on the agenda right now. I, I I will be in the in the northeast. I'm coming out to Rhode Island. Um, in a in a weekend uh, next Friday, not this coming Friday, but next Friday, and then we'll be up in Boston on the following Monday. Okay, will, will those dates be on the website at all? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Would those dates and locations be updated on your website at all? Yeah, or would that yeah, be information yeah, this, yeah, this, this week. Yeah, they'll, they'll be up, updated this week. Okay, I got you. All right, cool. And then, Chris, as I listen, man, I just want to let you all know that, um, you know, on behalf of all the Puerto Rican soldiers out here, you know, we too are dealing with our own, um, you know, struggle at the hands of these, at the hands of these devils, as you call them, Zaza. So, um, we absolutely stand in solidarity with the black struggle, as we always have, you know, from the Lords to the Panthers, and, you know, to this day, um, it continues. So, you know, Palante, as the Lords used to say, keep moving forward, and um, I thank y'all both so much for putting me on the path, and, um, you know, let's let's keep moving. All right. Peace Indeed, you, brother. brother. We appreciate yes. that, and we, 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 you know, the Puerto Rican family is just another branch of the tree. We don't uh, separate ourselves based on you know, where we were dropped off to take it from both. You know, it's all it's all love and we all family, so we appreciate that love. That's what's up, man. Let's keep going. All right. All right, peace, brother. All right. Peace. Peace. Two branches of the same tree. Sorry. Nine seven three area code. It's Professor Griffin and Zaza Ali on Enemy Minds Radio with our guest Khalid L. Akeem, who owes me four dollars. May I help you good <laughs> back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Um, assalamu alaikum, I call it. This is Janice. How are you? Uh, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> very good. And and assalamu alaikum to Professor Griff and Lady Zaza. Yes. Well, yes, 
I'm sorry, my daughter just interrupted me, so let me take care of her, and then I'll get back to you. But I was glad to hear somebody from this area just ask the question. I was going to ask, when are you going to be coming up this way? And it sounds like the closest you'll get is Rhode Island, which is not yeah. quite New York, but but that's okay. I was wondering if you were ever able to get in touch with um, – Khalid Muhammad at the Schomburg. I don't know if you were able to reach out to him. And also, you know I'm, Mary, I'm from, I'm, I'm from no. Newark, so I'm Mayor Raz Baraka. I'm sure he would love to have you here for our students here in Newark. That would be wonderful. Yeah, well, I, I haven't reached out to Khalil, uh, Khalil yet, uh, but oh, you know, good. he had okay. he he had he had me there a couple of years ago for um, okay. being. Um, oh, uh, that's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so I was a couple of years ago with, with uh, Sister Martha Diaz. Um, but, I mean, we, you know, definitely can go back and do something new. Uh, but, yeah, I do have to reach out to him, and uh, I would love to come come to Newark and, and uh, do something for us, too. Right. Um, okay. Who I have mad, mad respect for. So, um, yeah, if we can make something happen, I would love I would love to do that. You know, my brother Ernie Panicoli is out that way, too. Need to give him a shout-out. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll see what I can do on my end here. I'll uh, reach out to him and see if he'd like to do it. Black History Month is coming up. I mean, you should be. Uh, we celebrate our history every day. But, Absolutely. you know, as we have mugs go out, you know, of course, in February. So I don't know if you're already booked up for February. And if so, then we'll try we to got, talk later. But yeah. I will definitely reach we, out to Rand. Right okay. Please, please, please do. But I, I also have to say just thank you. Yo, I got to tell you how Zaza and Griff. Denise is one of my biggest supporters on Facebook <laughs> for years, for, for years. I mean, and I, I thank you so much. And she sends me quotes every morning. So I mean, well, I thank please, you. Yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate that, Denise. I really do. Well, I appreciate you and everything you do. Much love to you and your family. Keep doing what you're doing, and thank you for having me to the show. I was not aware of this show with Professor Griff and Lady Zaba, so. I, I just joined to be a subscriber, so thank you again. <laughs> oh, for sure. Good thing. Really appreciate you, sister. All right, so hold right. up and go on to the next one. And again, thank you, my brother. I really appreciate right. you. Stay strong. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. All right. Peace. Peace, Queen. All right. So, Colin, any last words? And what would you like to leave the people with? If you knew you were going back to you were going back home to Chitlin Switch, Missouri. I mean, where you from? Where you at again? <laughs> You know where I'm from. I'm, I'm in. No, my, not where you I'm from. Not, not where you from. Where, where, you where am I at? In the cornfield. I am in Sha- I, I'm in. I'm in the cornfields of Champaign, Illinois, over That's at right. the University of Illinois, the Fighting Illini. Okay. Um, but yeah, just just some parting words. I, I think, you know, one thing I'm promoting with the museum this year with the um, exhibit is the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. This, this is a big year for a lot of anniversaries, so I just want to run down just a few of the anniversaries that are represented in the museum uh, this tour. So we got the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. We're recognizing the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Malcolm X. This is the 40th anniversary of the departure of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the 40th anniversary of the leadership of Imam War being Muhammad, so as you come through the exhibit during this tour, we're recognizing all of those significant individuals and organizations. So um, that, that's um, I think that's one thing I want to leave the people with. But um, one one final thing it has to do with valuing our history. Right. There was a report that just came out uh, this week of uh, the Johnson Publishing Company wanting to sell their uh, photo- uh, photography archives that mm-hmm. dates back to the 40s. All their original prints and negatives are up for sale wow. for 40, wow. $40 million. Wow. Which is, I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's not worth the legacy of our people. Some things mm-hmm. need to be sacred. Some things should not be for sale. That's right. I mean, there's some things. I mean, with a with an archive like that, you you keep it. And if if you need money, you make money from it. I mean, there's money to be made off of licensing. You can make T-shirts from those prints. You can you know license those out to 
films and documentaries. Um, I mean, there's, there's just a lot of ways that you can make money. You can make, you know, you can make copies of those prints and make money. But uh, there's right. some things that you just don't give up. And, and, and Johnson Publishing has such an incredible, incredible arch- I mean, really, they have the biggest archive of black culture and history of, of America. I mean, mm-hmm. who else has documented in photography what Johnson Publishing has? Right. You know, nobody. You, you won't find another company that that's done that. But some things should not be for for sale. So I have <laughs> I, I have some I have some issues with with that. And it's a very unfortunate thing uh if that ends up in the wrong hands. Um right. so I'm I'm ho- I'm hoping that uh they, they think through it and think of other ways that they can raise money uh and keep Johnson Publishing afloat. And uh it shouldn't have to come from selling your most valuable resource. Right. Yeah, we right. gotta do better we gotta do better than that, man. So um, I, I want you know I want our you know your audience to think about to think about that. Um, right. But yeah, that, that's it, man. That's, that's, that's my parting words, man. You know, value our history. Don't don't give it don't give it up. Right. You forgot one thing. This is the 25th uh, anniversary of Professor Griff's Pawns in the Game album. That, came out. That's it. I, I still I got my cassette. <laughs> I bought it for a dollar. I bought it for a dollar in, in champagne. <laughs> Keep it up, Zaza. It wasn't that daggone funny. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Zaza, you got any final words? Well, you know, of course. Brother Khalid, I just, you know, want to tell you to keep doing what you're doing. Um, it, I, history is what is what woke me up. Uh, and I'm a <laughs> avid student of history. So what you do is especially important to me. Um, we stand behind you, we support you, and we stand on your shoulders because you have have created something. You broke the mold uh, with what you're doing. And um, our young people, it's a way to draw them in and to give them knowledge of self. So we love you and appreciate everything that you're doing, all those long, tedious trips you make and all those, you know, yes. fight rural places that you're in with snow right. and having to deal with all of that, you know, I know how it is. Just keep up the good work and it's definitely going to pay forward. Not just, you know, intangible things, but all of the intangible things the things. The young people who are who are benefiting from your work. So we appreciate you, brother. Thank you, right. brother. I appreciate that, my sister. Appreciate that. Really do. And Colin, in closing, um, give a greeting to Tasleen from me and Zaza and uh I shall. And and just know whatever you need us to do, um, Zaza roll in most cases like I roll. You understand? Know we have to do what we have to yes. do to get this information to our people to raise the consciousness level and to raise the vibrational pitch of their thinking through history. And like Zaza said, the history is her thing. You understand what I'm saying? And we have yes, to sir. strengthen. We have to strengthen the museum with those pieces that reflect the greatness in black women. Yes. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a marriage that has to happen, all right? But we really appreciate oh, you coming on the show, good brother, all right? Man, it's, it's been great, man. So anytime y'all need me, just holler at me. All right, good brother. We really appreciate sir. you. All right. Salam alaikum. All right. Salam alaikum. That was Khalid El Akim, the curator of the Black History 101 Mobile um, Museum. Um, if there's anything that I think I remember from the nine years in traveling, uh, the whole idea of um of seeing what it takes to put it together like uh, like a lot of times Zaza um you and I talk about bringing a camera here in the studio so the people can actually see what we do it's a difference hearing a polished version once we get on the air once it's eight o'clock right. and they say you're listening to blog talk radio blah blah blah, blah. and then the music come on it lights right. camera action but people don't see what goes into putting a show like this together so we're gonna bring the camera yeah. in and we're gonna have people see exactly what we do not not all the time now. We're gonna give you all a peep and then we're gonna close the door again. I'm serious because um, I think young people need to see it. We need to let people, young people, know that you could do this. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But until they see it, feel it, and able to touch it, you know, it's almost right now. It's, it's, it's an uh, impossibility to them right now because they, right, you know, they don't, right. they're visual people. Well, yeah, and, you know, I always say we have this idea and this concept of what revolution and liberation are, you know, this big Mm -hmm. bang theory kind of concept where 
you know, out of the blue one day is just going to get set off. No, it's it's all these these minutes and these moments and these days and these hours that we are letting pass us by where we could and should be doing something, uh, no matter how small or how big, uh, that can change the, the thinking of our people. And we know you and I, just from the work that we're doing, the impact that it's having, we're using our minds. We're not using money, we're not using capital, not to say that we won't or that we can't, but we're using our minds and our energy and our intention and our willpower uh, to raise the mind and the consciousness of our people uh, to, to better themselves. So, yes, this is definitely something that all of us can and should do, but in our own unique way. Don't try to be right. Griffin Zaza. Right. Don't try to outdo Griffin Zaza. Just be you. Find your right. flair, find your niche. Master it and then move forward. Right, exactly. And um, you know the reward will be will be great in your own way. Um, I reduce my expectations to uh, to knowing and understanding that um, not even trying to find my place and be remembered in history. I just want mm-hmm. to do the best job I know how to do what the Creator uh, gave me. So I'm in sync. Yeah. I'm connecting to the divine intelligence. I'm here doing what I'm supposed to do. All right. Yeah, and I I usually don't talk about this live, but, you know, I may have mentioned it before, but uh, just so the listeners know, uh, one of my short-term goals is to write a history textbook. And I'm talking about a real, authentic, uh, substantial history book looking at all of our ancient civilizations and and putting it side by side with the textbooks of this world and giving our Mm -hmm. children something to say, okay, look, this right. is actual fact of mm-hmm. where we've been and who we are as a people. I'm talking about millions of years. So we're not just talking about the hundreds of thousands of years that we can look to uh, in Africa and different civilizations around the world. But if we're really going to talk about history, then we have to try to tap back into that guy self because that's actually where it started. So right. just talking to Khalid El Akim and listening to him speak about you know, his experiences and, and the, the things that he represents. It just, re, you know, kind of re-energized me to, to, to never forget that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Music? You trying, to, you trying no. to send me a message? No. <laughs> no. Really? <laughs> no. I'm sorry about that. But, no, I think <laughs> um, the college of the world would appreciate not only your history book, but this uh, homeschool curriculum that you and I will be rolling out this time next year. Yes. So with, um, yes. So Indeed. let's make it happen and do what we need to do. Um, but my quote for this evening, uh, I think it was most honorable Elijah Muhammad passed on to Malcolm and a lot of his ministers that history is best qualified and most attracted to reward all of our research. That if you know what was, you know what is, and you could almost predict and understand what's coming and what's in front of us. All right. John Henry Clark says, racist will always call you a racist when you identify their racism. So to love mm. yourself now is a form of racism. And we have to understand that we're the only people who are criticized for loving ourselves. And white people think by you loving yourself is hating them. No, it's not. I love myself, and they become very irrelevant to me once I love myself. John Henry Clark. Mm. That's powerful. Uh, the the warrior and the king and the soldier uh, and the freedom fighter, Huey Newton, of course, out of Oakland, California, said, my fear was not of death itself, but a death without meaning. Mm. Wow, you on Huey. Is that because you're out in Oakland? Yeah. Okay, anyway, give thanks. We will see y'all on Thursday, brothers and sisters. Thank y'all for listening. Thank you for your, your support. Thanks all of the callers for calling in. And the brother that I kind of hung up on, don't take it personal, bro. <laughs> Just don't take it personal. This brother called in and asked us to ask him a damn question. <laughs> well, he got guts. Anyway, this is Professor Griff and Zaza Ali, and we're signing out here on Enemy Minds Radio. Big up to Khalid El Hakim, Black History 101 Mobile Museum. We're going to be with him in Harrisburg, PA, and Boston, Massachusetts in the next coming couple of weeks. Peace. Did That's we give Griff's him contact information? Did we give his contact uh, information? Did. We'll okay. put it up on the right. Facebook page, right? All right, cool. All right, peace. peace. I'll talk to you guys on peace. Peace. peace.